Good morning. morning. Shall we rise?
Give me 
from the rising of the sun Who is going down The name of the Lord is to be praised Who is like the Lord There is no one Who is like the Lord He is strong Holding me now 
gates of heaven opened and the Lord poured down his life living water upon all of us here and upon this city in the name of Jesus and the Lord says look to me and be safe and be healed and be delivered hallelujah you shall fulfill the destiny that I have given to you. You shall receive my joy and my peace and my love. The joy of the Lord is your strength and my grace is sufficient for you. And the Lord says, I will heal you. I'm the Lord who heals. I will heal you spirit soul and body i will bless you with healthy spirits soul and body hallelujah and to the young people to the student he says i will grant you wisdom to study that you will glorify my name hallelujah and he called us to be light of this world and salt of this earth that we will live lives worthy of our calling that we are the little Christ for him and draw people into his kingdom thank you Lord hallelujah let us just by faith receive his salvation receive his healing receive his deliverance thank you Lord thank you Lord Hallelujah. And He will cover us with His blood to protect us and to wash our sin away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us enjoy the abundant life that He has blessed us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By His stripes. 
serving a risen king. You are not serving a dead God. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Father, we thank you for this time that you have reminded us that you are a risen God and risen Christ and Savior of our life, O oh Lord. And even as we continue to uh, be appreciative of what you have done for us, O oh Lord, we pray that you will uh, be with us even as we uh, bring our tithes and offering to you, O oh Lord. And pray that you will bless it for the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. Praise the Lord. While the first offering is going round, I'd like to make an announcement about the second offering. Eh? We have already announced last week uh, because one of our church members eh, uh, has been affected with her vertebrae. Three of the vertebrae displaced and the operation will come to 35,000. That's a lot of money, 35,000. And uh, because of her situation, she was not financially sound. And uh, with the selling of a car, she'll get about 14,000, she told me. And that means uh, there'll be a lack of 21,000. So because of that, I thought uh, it would be a good thing uh, for us to show compassion to her in a practical way and then to make a collection. Normally we don't, uh, we don't make a second collection. This is only once in a very long while. We want to make this collection and uh, it's a free will offering. If you, you are not prepared to put anything, it is perfectly all right. And if you put and do it generously, uh, that will be very all right. All right? That will be very all right. And you, it will all go towards helping her. We want to just show compassion on her, help her the best we can as a church. So therefore, this second offering. Father, I thank you. Lord, you have blessed us uh, richly in our lives. And there are times when one or two of our brethren falls by the way, needing our help. We pray that we would want to respond positively to help such a one so that she can be lifted up from her situation and know that you have not forsaken her and that you are continuing to work in her life and to bless her. We ask this for her, for Sandy Wong. Father, that, uh, she will realize that there are a lot of people who love her, who want to be to contribute to her and be involved in her, with her. So I pray that as we give, we will give generously and we ourselves will be richly blessed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Um, well, the Chinese New Year is officially over. So <laughs> I think most of us are back here. Uh, we want to thank God for granting as journey mercies, all of us who travel have come back home safely. Uh, we have some visitors in our midst, Henshin Lam, Alice Lam, Christian Lam, and Hui Min Chua. Uh, would you like to stand so that we can welcome you? <laughs> welcome to FGA Ipo. Now, uh, if you refer to your bulletin, the usual announcements are there. Cell meetings are starting. The dates are all stated there. Morning prayers will be on as usual. Wednesday prayer meeting will also be on. PKC Church is on downstairs, same time as our meetings. Youth and GYF will all be starting. Youth will be on as usual. GYF will be starting. Uh, continue to pray for our present government and our Prime Minister to allow God to work for our beloved nation. Uh, today we have our very own pastor to give us the word. Let us pray for Pastor Ong. 
Father God, we bring Pastor Ong before you. We thank you for this faithful servant of yours who is here to deliver your word, to teach us, to discipline us, to help us into a deeper understanding of your word. We thank you, God, that your word will go forth anointed, fully anointed to do whatever it is supposed to do. We thank you, Father God, once again for Pastor Ong, who is ever ready to minister to his flock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Mandy. Okay, let's uh, turn to the word. Father, I commit myself to you. Even as I, uh, in my preparation, Lord, uh, didn't really have the time, but I yield the whole matter to you, that you speak through this message that I'm uh, taking on this morning. In Jesus' name. Uh, I'm going to talk about the sense of God. The sense of God increasing in us. The sense of God increasing in us. You know, very often in the world, we have religions. You know, whether it's one religion or another, the more we are caught up in the religion, the more we are in bondage. You have to do all the things that the, re the religion teaches you, when actually there is no significant experience of the reality of God. And your, the question is, uh, you ask, why do I do it? The steeper you are in religion, the more you are caught up, and it's like you can't get out of the trap. You are caught there, and not being able to get out of the trap. If Christianity is like that, and there are some, some who take Christianity in that manner, I can tell you, it will also be a religion that will not help you at all. Christianity is Christ. It's our experience with God himself, with Christ, who is our Savior, Lord and King. And it's through our relationship with him and our experience of Him, that we realize there's a living God who truly loves us. Actually, in our intercession, we have, uh, you know, we have talked about, about God, who He is, what He is, to have a right perception of God, and I thought it was fantastic. God is a God who loves us uh, without, without measure. He loves us with all his heart. He desires for the best of each one of us who know him. And he wants to get us to get to know him better. And in that fashion, know him better and experience the blessings that can come to know him. So, you see this morning, I'd like to tell you that Christians must experience God becoming more important in their lives or of Him increasing in our lives. That's why, you know, on one occasion when uh, John the Baptist, uh, you know, was uh, led to make this statement and he said, uh, because uh, when uh, there was a there was a bringing together of Jesus and John the Baptist. It was like John the Baptist, who was very well known to the people, becoming less of lesser importance. And he became a shadow in the situation. When he was the main person in the scene, he became just a shadow. And in place of it, Jesus rose in prominence. He became more and more important. I tell you, a man that is not of God would be affected in that manner. If you are in John's, John the Baptist's position, you, you think, why am I becoming less important? 
until like I'm fading away when Jesus came into the scene. It is this. Uh, for us Christians, uh, Christ must increase and we must increase. Uh. And that's precisely what John touched on. Uh. And when he touched on it, uh, he touched on it correctly. Uh. He was a man of God. Uh. He was prepared to fade away in order that Christ may occupy the central place. For us, if our lives does not allow Christ to take the central place, God becoming more important to us, then really we are missing out. That is not the trust of Christianity. So John the Baptist, when he was he was uh, uh, brought to uh, confront this issue. You know what he said? He said, uh, he must increase and I must increase. You know, for us Christians, if uh, in your life God is becoming more and more important, that's the right way to go. If in your life God is not becoming more important, but becoming less and less important. That's the wrong way. That's the way of the enemy. The devil would want you to go that way. And that's why in the churches today, in the churches, the churches are confronting this reality where there are many Christians, I'm saying, there are many Christians who are not attending church meetings. You know, I, I just recently met someone who told me that uh, she finds very comfortable uh, at home just seeing, seeing the video of the church in session, hearing the message of the speaker in session, and you know, he thinks, she thinks that it's the right thing to do. I can tell you that's the wrong thing to do. That's the wrong thing. You know, that's the way God... Uh, the devil wants to, to uh, reduce the effectiveness of the church uh, and cause the church uh, to be heading nowhere. And if Christians play along with that, you find that uh, you know, they are playing into the hands of the enemy. You see, I was uh, just talking to our church in, in uh, Penang. The Bahasa Church uh, has a congregation of about 2,000. Pastor Alan... Alan uh, Tan told me they have a congregation about close to 2,000. But today, there are only 500 attending. One quarter of the, the 2,000. And the FJKL, you know, because of uh, this family, I was talking with uh, Liu, Liu Hoi Fu. He was telling me that from a congregation of 6,000, now they have about 900 attending. The, the Church has been affected. Why? Because God has not increased in some of His people. They are doing their own thing, having their own opinion, and hence uh, bringing dishonor to the Lord and also uh, reducing the effectiveness of the kingdom of God uh, to the extent that they are not involved with the church. Uh. So I'd like to say with you, with no apology, that it's important for us to realize that Christ must increase and we must increase. It is of fundamental importance to us that this happens. When this happens, then we are growing stronger in the Lord, the church is growing stronger in the Lord, and we will be doing what is the purpose of God in the end, End days that we face. You see, in Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 17, maybe I'll read that. Matthew chapter 11. Verses 16 to 17. Two verses. I'll read it from my, if it's shown on the board, that'll be fine. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces 
and calling to their companions and saying, We play the flute, flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourn to you, you did not lament. 18. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine viper, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by, their, by her children. You know what this portion is saying? In the world that we live in today, there are many out there, the young ones, doing their own things, and you try to bring in situations that are of, of relevance, they will not participate. They will not respond. They will not respond. As I've said here, I've read to you here, that uh, in the marketplace, calling to their companions, saying, we play the fruit for you. They did not dance. They didn't respond. We moan to you. And they did not lament. They are caught up in doing what they want. Taken up with the world, caught up there, and not being able to extricate themselves from there. And when the truth and the real things come along, they miss them altogether. When John the Baptist came, they did, they did, not, did not accept him. When Jesus himself came, many did not accept him. Would we want to be in such a generation? Would we want to be in such a generation? Where eventually, uh, what was said was this. Uh, but wisdom is justified by their children. They think they know. Uh, and hence, they miss, out, miss it out altogether. It is sad uh, to see young Christians becoming nothing. Uh, but like the world, and heading nowhere. It can be that. There are so many heading nowhere, and that's the reason why the church has to rise up to pray that the eyes of this will be opened, that they will begin to see. Success is not making money. We are not meant to make money, and, but to make a difference in the world. Of course, we need money. There's no question about that. God has been gracious enough to help us in the area of making, making a living and some of us make it really quite well. But life is really not that. Life is to make a difference in the world that we live in. That our lives may touch other lives and cause them to be drawn to the Lord. You see, it is not just about making money, eh, as I said. What happened on Sunday, very often is not carried through to Monday. What I'm saying, uh, whatever uh, spiritual experience that we have on a Sunday, is often not carried through to Monday. Uh, when it should. Uh. If our lives uh, are touched by God, then our lives will, will come uh, after that, uh, after the Sunday, as we proceed to Monday. Uh. It is like things matter only when they are related to them and to the world. And this should not be the case. Right? The next slide, please. I'd like to maybe, in reference to what I'm saying uh, this morning, I'd like to refer you to the tremendous story of Joseph. Joseph was born into a family of 12 sons. There were 12 sons in the family of which he was the second youngest. And if you were to look at the life of Joseph, you will realize that he was a good man and a godly man from the start. From the start to the finish, he was a godly man. His life was exemplary. His life has always inspired me. He's one of my, you know, my, my heroes, one of the heroes in my life. I'd like to talk, to, talk, to, talk about him a bit. He was... He was, uh, it was not his fault that his father loved him. He became the favorite son of his father, Jacob. 
and was hated by his brothers. Sometimes in a family, uh, when one is lover, uh, the others would hate him. And this was a case uh, as far as Joseph was concerned. You know, I was telling you know, some of my people that when we were young, uh, my father was able to love one. He would love me, and then my second brother came, he would discard me and love the second. And then the third became important. Then the fourth, uh, the rest of us relegate into, in, you know, in, into uh, insignificance. That should not be the case. Of course, that should not be the case. But uh, it was not Joseph's fault uh, that he was the favourite son. And then one day, uh, as the favourite son, uh, one day he dreamt two dreams uh, about being above his family. Uh. I don't want to go into the dreams because it will take too much time. And they hated him the more. Because uh, the dreams uh, indicated uh, that all of them would bow to him. All of them, plus father and mother, would all bow to him. And the brothers are saying, this uh, you know, arrogant guy uh, thinks uh, we are going to bow to him. And they hated him the more. So, you know, they decided uh, they'll do something to him. Can you just imagine taking your own brother and uh, wanting to kill him? They at first wanted to kill him. They saw him coming, and then he was telling, showing them the beautiful coat of many colors that the father gave him. And they were jealous of him. I was thinking to myself as I reflected on my own life, was I ever jealous of my brothers in all that? Yeah? I'm glad that I was not. Not to the extent of wanting harm to come to the brother. And that was the case with his brothers. And they took him, they wanted to kill him, but in the end they sold him not to the slave traders who were taking slaves to Egypt. And so he was sold, and he was taken and sold to a household of Pontifer. And was strongly, and then in the household of Pontifer, he rose as a chief servant because he was such a godly man who honored God in his life. He was given the rightful place and given the charge over the whole, whole household. But then the wife of Pontifor saw him to be such a handsome young man. He grew up to be such a handsome young man. The wife was uh, you know, drawn to him. And uh, eventually, you know, but because he was a righteous man who loved God only and who would not do any wrong, he refused uh, all the advances of Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife got him into trouble. Created a situation where it looked as if he seduced her. And then when this was told to Potiphar, of course Potiphar was, was very angry. Potiphar was thinking, I've given this man such trust, giving him the, the charge over my household. And he does that with my wife. When actually he was not guilty, but he was sent to jail. Without a trial, sent to jail. And that's where, that was where he was. Unjustly jailed for what he was not guilty of. Have we in life been treated unjustly? In prison, he gained favour with the captain of the prison, captain of guards. And there, one day, there were two other prisoners who were brought in. One, the butler, of the of Pharaoh, the other, the baker of Pharaoh. And they had dreams, they had dreams, and they did not know what, what the dreams were about. And they told, and then he, they were told that Joseph is able to interpret their dreams. When that, when uh, Joseph was able to do that, and then Exactly what Joseph said came to pass. The butler was set free. Of course, later on, the, the baker also wanted his dream to be interpreted, but he was not set free. But as for this baker who was set free, <coughs> he, when he was set free, Joseph 
reminded him, reminded his baker to remember him before Pharaoh. You see what he said? I'd like to just read from here. Then you see exactly what happened. Here he said, But remember me, verse 14. Genesis chapter 40, verse 14. But remember me when it is well with you, he told the baker. And please show kindness to me. Again about himself. Make mention of me to Pharaoh. And get me out of this house. Again, me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away. I was stolen away from the hand of the Hebrews. And also, I have done nothing here that they should put me in this dungeon. It was all concentrated on him, on me. When you get back to Pharaoh, remember to tell Pharaoh, about all this, hoping that he will be set free from his situation. I would say, if I'm in Pharaoh's position, I, I'm in Joseph's position, I would think that I've done nothing wrong. In one thing to set free from an unjust imprisonment. For nothing I've done, I'm in that strait. And therefore he was crying out for himself. But uh, the baker, the, sorry, this uh, butler went back, restored to his former position, in the position of authority and favor with Pharaoh. He forgot him altogether. Forgot about Joseph altogether. Didn't say anything in favor of Joseph. And Joseph remained in prison for another two years. What injustice that, that was. You know, when, when I thought of that, I was thinking, uh, what injustice that was. But then, God with God is different. If you want to be an instrument of God, to be used by God, He wants you uh, to be rid of yourself. Yourself must decrease. Uh, and the decrease of self uh, is what is required for a person to be mightily used by God. He was preparing Joseph to be mightily used by him. That's the reason why he wants all the self to go. None of self and all of Christ. He must increase and I must decrease. We as Christians who serve the Lord in our walk with God, if there is still a lot of problems in yourself, what I can do, what, you know, what I should have had, and all that, all about self, you find that you are not there yet. And Joseph was not yet there yet. For a man who was righteous and upright, and yet he was not there yet. But then, the time came, when Pharaoh had a dream and he dreamt of uh, seven cows uh, came up, fed, and then later, later on seven cows, thin, who devout the fat cows and so forth. Uh, and nobody would tell him the interpretation of dreams. Uh. That was when the butler said, Yes, my Lord, I remember when I was in prison, there was this prisoner, Joseph, he told me my dream. And it was exactly as it was. And so, of course, Pharaoh was all ears and decided to call for Joseph. And Joseph was brought to him, and Joseph told the dream. And uh, Pharaoh could, could sort of sense uh, the correctness of the interpretation. 
And he responded to Joseph. And after getting the advice of Joseph, he carried out exactly what Joseph said. You know, to, during the seven fruitful years, to collect the produce of the land, one-fifth of the produce of Egypt, during the seven fruitful years, and to keep them for use for the seven lean years, lean years of famine. If not for this, this tragedy, Egypt or the world at that time would have been terrible trouble, where there will be such famine that many will die of famine. But because of this tragedy, you know, you find that the whole situation was brought under control. And Joseph was picked. They, were, they wanted someone to rule over the situation, to control the situation. And Joseph was picked. And it was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in, the, in all his servants, for, for, that, for there was no one wiser than Joseph. And that's why he was picked. That's why I'm telling you that uh, for me, uh, this guy Joseph, uh, he's really fantastic. The way God worked in his life uh, is so fantastic. Uh, and he has never done anything wrong that I can pick on. I tell you, in some of, in such, some of such situations uh, when you are so wrong, uh, you know, there's so much harm done to you because of the injustice, uh, you will react. Uh, not Joseph. Uh. He submitted to all that happened to him as if it is in God's plan and purpose. And you know, God used him mightily. And today, God is looking for men and he's asking, can we find a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. Can we find a man who has the Spirit of God? And of course, Joseph fits the description. He was all the time submit to, submitted to God. Although he was just a simple guy, he did many of things that... Uh, you know, that, that, was not, that was not very outstanding or whatever. But he did the things very sincerely, truthfully. He did not mean to, to degrade his brothers. He did not mean to do any harm to anybody at all. He was just telling what happened to him as God worked it in his life. And it was counted against him. But then it worked. In his favor. Praise the Lord. Ultimately, the end of the story will tell the truth of the matter. Can we find a man who has the Spirit of God? He was a man who had the Spirit of God. To serve the Lord well, there is the major act of having to remove self. And that was done as far as, most, as Joseph was concerned. Even though he was trying to, what, wanting to get out of his situation of imprisonment, and yet God lengthened the period for another two years until the self is rid of. Sometimes uh, we wonder why God doesn't answer our prayers immediately. Because the self is so prominent in us uh, that God cannot use us the way he wants us. Uh. And so when the self was removed, then God could have his rightful place in the life of Joseph. Praise the Lord for the reality of this truth. The next slide. And you find that uh, when uh, Joseph was ready to play the role and he was appointed the position of authority. He did it well. And then his brothers came back, came to Egypt. You know why their brothers came to Egypt? Because all their provisions have already run out. 
they will starve to death uh, if they will not go to Egypt uh, to get from the storehouses uh, the supplies uh, that are plentiful. The one-fifth that were collected for, from the seven uh, rich years uh, were kept in the storehouse and they were all available for those who need them. And so they had to go there. And when they went to Egypt, uh, They went and faced their brother, Joseph. They didn't, they could not recognize him. Can you just imagine the terrible harm the brothers have done to him? Wanted first to kill him, and then got him sold to the slaves, and then uh, became Pontifus' uh, servant, sent to prison unjustly, and now they came and face your brother. They couldn't recognize him. They couldn't recognize him. They saw him, they couldn't recognize him. But he could recognize them. And they got what they wanted, the supply, to take back to the father. But later on, they run out. After going back, they run out. The father you know, ask them to go back. They were reluctant because they did not fulfill some of the conditions that Mo Moses, uh, uh, sorry, Joseph uh, gave them. And they were reluctant to go back. And then eventually when they went back, uh, they went back to cut the story short. I could very well tell you the details of it. But when they went back, uh, this time, uh, Joseph revealed himself to them and told them that he is their brother whom they sold to Egypt. And he was all forgiving and all love as he hugged his brothers. You know, as they met together, as they hugged, they cried together. You know? Then that brotherly love returned. And then all of a sudden, the, 11 bro the 10 brothers, you know, the, the brothers became afraid. For all that they have done to the brother who has done them nothing wrong. Here, he was before them. The brother now who is in authority, second only to Pharaoh. He had the, he had the authority in all Egypt. And anything he says goes. And the brothers knew how they are vulnerable, open to the revenge that Joseph could take. Was there any revenge in his head at all? None at all. For Joseph, there's no revenge at all, absolutely. Only love for his own. That's how wonderful it was. And as they were wanting to say sorry to him and all that, he told them, it is the dealing of the Holy Spirit. What they have meant for evil, the Spirit of God has meant for good. You know, in our lives as Christians, sometimes in bad situations, we interpret the matter wrongly. When actually it's God, it can be God at work. And when we subject to submit ourselves to God, you find that God will show Him strong on our behalf. As He shows the actual, you know, actual reason for the situation. And so this was a case of Joseph. He was the man of the hour, showing how God can use us. Powerful men to save many, save those who are in trouble, and then to also forgive them. And that's what he did. He said, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is today, to save many alive. If not for all the moves of God, 
Egypt at that time would have been in very big, bad trouble. In the world we live in today, there are moves of God that has saved us from situations uh, more than we realize. Uh. There are things that happen in Ukraine uh, today uh, that may surprise you, uh, that has prevented certain things from happening, happening we should otherwise have happened and caused a great deal of misery to us uh, today. Sometimes we wonder what will happen. Will America fight China? Will, be, will it be such a situation where we will be in a dire strait and uh, not be able to escape from it at all? You know, when we learn to trust God uh, and know God, that is in God who is in charge, uh, it will be a different situation altogether. The statute of God deals, the statute of God deals with us until we are ready and willing to serve his kingdom's cause. Of course, many of us struggle a great deal, but when we are willing to allow God to have his way, then the situation will be faster and we will be brought to a situation when we are ready to serve his kingdom's cause. And you feel that, you find that uh, in the case of Joseph, when he was picked, he was a man of tremendous skill. I don't know how he went through life, prepared by God, not prepared in any way at all, and yet he was a man of tremendous skill. Joseph had the skills and was picked. So the advice was good, in the eyes of Pharaoh and all his servants, uh, that he should be picked, to pick to be the one. And the Lord was with Joseph, and that was the reason why he was a successful man. I don't know what is your definition of success. Very often we we define success on the basis of how well a person has done financially. Actually, when I, I thank God, I come from a godly family. My mother was tremendously godly. She raised four sons. Uh, I'm the eldest. I have three other brothers. As I'm talking to you, my, sec my third brother is uh, in Shikana Glory, preaching in Shikana Glory. You know, all four of us, can you just imagine, raised by my m mother, all four of us are preachers of the word. We are committed to preach the word of God. And we could see the hand of God upon us. And if you, are, you talk about success in how much you can earn in this world, how well you do in your business, is that success? What is success in the Christian sense? Success in the Christian sense is knowing that God is with you. Knowing that no matter what the situation may be, God is with you. God is with us is so important. It is having the reality of God in our lives. Knowing that uh, you can say it and say it with conviction. There are times you are in trouble, you know, you are, and wonder, where is God? And yet God has not forsaken you. God is there for you. And He shows Himself strong on your behalf at the right moment. And then you realize it's wonderful to know God and to trust in Him and to let Him have His way and His way in our lives. Joseph, a man after God's own heart, a person who was simple in his disposition, carry out with no ill intention, you know, just living out his life as it unfold, unfolded. And Joseph served the purpose of God in his life. My brothers and sisters, even as we are willing to yield to God uh, in his dealings with us, in the manner he works in our lives, we can experience the same as Moses did, as, as Joseph did. Actually, we had a uh, this uh, pastor's conference uh, where they also were, they were talking about uh, the main speaker was talk, talking about Joseph uh, 
And that's why I, I was inspired. I picked on what he has said to some extent to share with you of how we Christians can make a difference when we yield to God and allow Him to have His way. Sometimes His way may not be the way we want. It does not show as clearly as we decide to show, but ultimately, the results will prove it. That God has had His ways in your life. When we yield to God and allow Him to have His way, you find that our lives is at its best. And you can call it success. Ultimately, success is having God in our lives. And God having His way in our lives and we experiencing the reality of God at work in our lives. You have to praise, praise Him for that. You see, actually, I, as I was, uh, I was uh, in touch with uh, the Han Chen's family, uh, I was myself facing some problems myself. Some problems of sickness. Pam knows I, I, we believe in God healing us, and yet God was not healing me. You know, I would, when uh, uh, Brother Liu Hoi Fu, uh, Elder Liu Hoi Fu from KL, rang me up, I could have said, Hoi Fu, uh, I'm not well. Uh, you have to spare me. Uh. Maybe I, I pass you to my other pastor, Ken Hin, uh, you can talk to him. I could have done that. Uh, but I did not. Uh. I was thinking, no matter what, uh, God will enable me. Uh. And I thank God for taking on. And uh, as I went to them, one thing led to the other. I find uh, Han Shen to be a very, very amicable person, very friendly person. It's a joy and delight to deal with him. You know, when there is a need for things, he'll tell me. And I was prepared to submit to his decision. If he says don't come, then I won't go. I told myself, if, I, I told Hoi Fu also, if Han Shen says no, then I won't go. I won't go. If uh, uh, Ellie says no, so I won't go. So I was communicating with the two of them and uh, deciding to be led of the Lord. And uh, all the answers were in the yes. And that's the reason I went. And I thought it was a great joy to see your family come to know, know the Lord. Accept Jesus as your Savior, Lord. And I told them, today, you may know the blessings to some extent. In later years, you'll know it to a great extent. As it unfolded in the life of Joseph, it will unfold in your lives too. And there, you'll see that there's no regret. In the end, Joseph was used to save all of the known world then. If not for Joseph, many would have perished during the days of the famine, of seven years, of seven difficult years. And God used Joseph mightily. He was not an not a, a extravagantly intelligent man, not very intelligent. He was not a very outstanding man. He was just an ordinary man like you and I. The 11th in the family. And he did not do anything that was, that was wrong that, that would mean, that would bring disaster to him that he deserves none at all. He just lived the life of a young boy, lived a, young, lived a life of a young man, and he went on. The only thing was he honored the Lord all the way. He did what was right, and he was not afraid to stand for God. And I found that there was nothing, anything, and nothing really, really wrong that he has done. I look at many of the characters in the Bible. There are many of them who have done many wrong things. David did many wrong things. But this guy did nothing wrong. And he suffered more than some of them who did far more wrong. And yet he did not 
fought God, did not question God, but submit to God all the way. And that's how he was richly blessed by God. May we know Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord and learn to submit to him more and more so that for your life and for my life, it will be true that Jesus will increase and we will decrease for his glory and for our personal good. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'll just end uh, here with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, uh, for your goodness to us in so many ways. So very often we do not know the reckoning of God with us. We think, Lord, some of the things are unfair. Some things shouldn't have happened to us. We think people have uh, offended us. We think that uh, we have the right to act the way we do. Lord, we have to pray that you help us to see the life of Joseph. That we will learn, Lord, to realize how it can be when we submit to you. Allow you the room to move in our lives. And for so, so some of the bad things that happen to us, we will not fault you, but just learn to trust you. Learn to yield to you and believe that uh, you will indeed rectify the matter and bring us to a point of knowing that you are God who loves us with an everlasting love, a love that will not let us go, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that whilst there may be situations where we need to continue to learn to trust you and yield to you and pray, we pray that we'll have the results that will inspire us to walk with you all the more and to allow you to continue to do your work in our lives so that we, become, we can become the men and the women that you want us to be. We thank you as we pray this in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.